Recently ran a Twitter poll about what product update you guys are most excited for this year in 2018. And you chose the classic iPhone. What should I expect? How did I get so popular last year? I was reporting on this thing. Let's talk about the 2018 iPhone lineup. So I'm very happy to announce that there are a couple more leaks confirming that idea that Apple is going to refresh the iPhone SE in March. Couple rumors spreading around that they are planning an update to it. We're not exactly sure how major it is, but I'm still sticking with my theory that they're going to give it the iPhone 8 treatment. I think it's too much of a budget phone for Apple to go all in on it and make kind of a 10 version with face ID, no home button, dual camera and all that. I also think trying to stuff a dual camera into a phone that's that incredibly small is probably a little too difficult. So they're probably still going to keep the SC in the budget territory. So that's why I don't try to imagine the most amazing things coming to the next iPhone SE. I think it'll still be a basic upgrade. It will seem a little bit hypocritical for Apple to release something that still has touch ID, still has fairly large bezels, and still has the same design approach of a phone that is five, six year old design now. But what they are going to do to it is give it a much faster processor, similar to the original SE. They gave it the fastest processor that was available in an iPhone at the time. So I think they'll do that again and include the A11 Bionic chip in the iPhone SE, make the entire back of it glass so it can support wireless charging, up that camera, perhaps allow it to shoot 4K at 60 with that new supported file type. I'm hoping that, of course, they remove the headphone jack on it, but they make room with that removed headphone jack, which, keep in mind, on a phone that small, takes up a lot more space than on a regular 8 Plus or 10, meaning they could use that leftover space on a Taptic engine. That's one big loss you have on a regular iPhone SE is that you don't get 3D touch touch, you don't get that taptic feedback when sending messages or viewing live photos. It would be a really cool and noticeable update if on the second generation of the SE, they were able to include that, as well as the new water resistance ratings. I think if they had all of that at a price of about $450 to $400, they would definitely have a winner on their hands. An Apple iDesigner has also designed a lot of concepts for this next generation SE that I totally want to happen. I think he's spot on, but of course we're not really going to know until a couple months from now. But then of course there's the phones that a lot of people people are trying to get excited for. Obviously, you've heard me talk about this, the iPhone 10 Plus, which maybe some of you don't realize, but it's the rumor that Apple's going to release a six and a half inch display on the next generation iPhone that will come in a plus configuration as well as the regular 5.8 inch configuration, which I mean, I gotta say is pretty hard to get excited about. It's like, oh, great, they're making a bigger one. Whoa. Is that it? Like, is there any other differences? It's kind of hard to get excited for the changes that are gonna happen to the regular 5.8 inch model. And we're still not exactly sure what they'll be called. My prediction is that they're gonna go with the yearly route because right now, now that the lineup is eight and 10 and the 10 is a Roman numeral, it's gonna be very confusing if they make a nine and 11, they just shouldn't do that. I think it would make more sense if in September they just call it the iPhone. And then of course us tech journalists and you commenters out there will just refer to it as the 2018 iPhone and then next year we'll refer to it as the 2019 iPhone. I know it's kind of a mouthful, but it will be easier to pronounce down the road opposed to iPhone 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. That gets confusing. But a couple of the changes I would like to see on the regular 5.8 inch model is for one, being able to shrink that camera hump. There's been no leaks or reports that they're working on that, but it was definitely one of the most common complaints people had with not just the 10, but all iPhones in the recent years. We first saw the camera hump on the 6 and 6S and over time, we've noticed that they haven't really gone away. In fact, they've even gotten more protruding and more noticeable. And I really wish that as Apple is perfecting their design, as I do believe that this is the best iPhone they've ever created, next year has to be all about perfecting this design. And that is one very simple thing that I think could go a long way when people upgrade. Second of all, we are actually getting leaks and rumors saying that the next generation of iPhones are going to support larger batteries, meaning they're going to find a way to shrink down the CPU and the motherboard on the next generation iPhone so that they can hold more battery space. But I I also think that leak is also just obvious because the 10 plus the processor components might be a little bit larger than the regular 10 but for the most part I think the majority of the device is going to be larger battery so of course you're probably going to see the largest battery ever in the iPhone 10 plus but I don't necessarily think that's going to result in a longer battery life a lot of people are thinking that that means extended battery life but there was a separate leak and rumor that I believe it is more current with which is that future generations of face ID as we kind of got the rushed version of it 
which I still think is fine. As we know from the leaks we were reading from Apple all throughout 2017, they were in a huge rush to get it finished and they were in a huge rush to assemble them as quick as possible. They had high failure rates in the factory. So I definitely think it's safe to say that with the iPhone 10, Apple was very, very pushed and very, very pressured to get it out on time. Now, I think that since iPhone 10 production is slowing down, the holidays are over, less people are buying them. They can take some time to make Face ID better, acknowledge the problems it has, and make it even better on the future generation. So one thing they could fix is, of course, the speed of it. They know that lots and lots of YouTubers hammered on the iPhone 10 because the OnePlus 5T's face unlock feature, while much, much less secure, is very, very quick. And sometimes it can look pretty embarrassing for the iPhone 10 when you're comparing 5T's unlock feature to the 10. So speed is one primary feature while also keeping it just as safe and just as secure. And I think the next thing I would personally love to see added is Face ID's range. As of right now, you kind of have to be looking at it at the exact right angle. And if your phone is angled a little bit too off, it doesn't work. I think the benefits of pursuing a Face ID future opposed to Touch ID is that as you get better and better at developing Face ID technology, it can work from all sorts of angles so that I could have my phone resting at a desk and I don't even have to, you know, bow to it in a certain way or look at it a specific way. It just realizes I'm there and I don't necessarily have to look at it, but there's content awareness features. And because we saw those leaks that were definitely confirming that future generations of Face ID would require more battery, I think they could do something that I was theorizing they were going to do with Face ID before this came out, which is perhaps when you're using your phone every once in a while, it scans the user's face and says, yes, that is my owner. This is okay. Keep doing what I'm doing. But as soon as my phone is handed off to someone else, it can do its routine scan and be like, nope, that's not my owner and lock certain apps. It could be more encrypted and locked down and realize that, hey, the user interacting with this device is not my rightful owner. And in that way, the next generation iPhone could definitely be one of the most secure out there because now someone can't even use your phone for 20 seconds before the phone locks itself and says, ah, give the phone back to its owner. Of course, that would be complicated if you want other people to use your phone. And that's one issue I think Apple is running into right now is a lot of people are mad that you cannot add multiple faces to Face ID. After all, all we could add multiple fingerprints to Touch ID, right? Well, Apple actually claims that the multiple fingerprint mode was not intended for multiple users, and just because you have multiple fingers, they added multiple finger options. But because you only have one face, they're only letting you add one face, and I disagree with that. I think it should be kind of hard to add an extra face, like you should have to enter your passcode, and I believe you had to do that with fingerprints anyway. But definitely a very nice upgrade to Face ID would be the option of maybe adding just one or two more faces so that the phone doesn't constantly lock itself when and it's being handed to other people. But say if a stranger was picking up your phone and you didn't realize it, it would lock and not show any private information. Of course, there's the other standard improvements I'd love to see, like an A12 chip, perhaps on the next generation iPhones, we're gonna get six or eight gigs of RAM. Incredible Geekbench scores, I'm sure. One thing that I would think is kind of a neat cherry on top is if, because Apple has so many 5K iMacs out there, perhaps the A12 chip with the new optimizing storage format that they introduced on iOS 11, perhaps the next generation iPhone could be the first phone to shoot at 5k video probably not 60 fps but just super high res video that's for cinematic stuff only but would definitely look beautiful on any 5k iMac i think that would complement the devices very well and make a very well-rounded ecosystem now as i've mentioned before i'm still participating in the portless challenge i have not plugged anything into my iphone 10 however i think it's still a little bit too soon for apple to remove the lightning port for good while i think that's coming in the future i'm not anticipating that it's going to be this year most likely to 2019 or 2020 when they actually ditch all ports entirely. So I wouldn't expect that at the end of 2018. But I do expect that because they've perfected the manufacturing process of the iPhone 10, we'll probably get four colors, maybe a product red one, the blush gold one, and then of course silver and space gray, opposed to the very disappointing two color options of last year, which both of which look very good, I'll admit, but I'm sure even Apple wishes they could have made more. But because to limited supply, limited parts, they weren't able to diversify the lineup very much. But I think this year, They'll have plenty of resources and plenty of time to make multiple versions. And I'm guessing they're probably going to stick with the same storage configurations of 64 and 256. Of course, better waterproofing, better speakers and all that is expected. I can't wait to see the iPhone 10 Plus's incredibly high pixel density. Rumors are saying it's gonna be around 500 pixels per inch, which is gonna be amazing. And I can't wait to see what kind of software exclusives we get on the Plus model iPhone. So those are what I think we're going to be seeing next year. I'm curious to hear what you guys think of the 2018 iPhone lineup. I think it's going to be a very perfected one, not a very original one, one that doesn't have a lot of original ideas like we saw in 2017, but a lot more well-rounded out ideas that take their time and don't feel as rushed. Of course, all of that, let me know in the comments.
comments below. This is your Apple Sheep here, and I will see you in the next one.